Now you should remember from GCSE that when we look at the periodic table, we can get a lot of information about an element from it, about atoms from it. So the symbol just gives you the name of the element. The bottom number is the atomic number. You should remember that that's just the number of protons in the nucleus. Top number is the mass number. We should probably be more accurate and say that's the relative atomic mass. And we know that's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So we know a lithium atom, going off these numbers, has an atomic number of three, so three protons, and it has four neutrons, which brings the relative atomic mass up to seven. Now we call it relative atomic mass because, well, when we deal with mass, we're talking about kilograms, aren't we? But we know that a lithium atom doesn't weigh seven kilograms. So this is just relative. But what is it relative to? Well, you might say, Hydrogen just weighs one, so therefore we just do everything relative to hydrogen. Helium weighs four times as much because it has four for the mass number instead of one. And yeah, that's correct, but it's not the whole story. When scientists were deciding what to base relative mass off, they didn't go for hydrogen. Initially, they went for oxygen, and then they changed their mind and ended up going with carbon, specifically carbon-12, a carbon-12 atom, a normal carbon atom with six protons, six neutrons. So we can say that a relative mass of one is equal to one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Yes, electrons included, not just the nucleus. And so you might say, well, hang on a minute, isn't that exactly the same thing? Isn't one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom exactly one? For chemistry purposes, pretty much yes. But actually, if you go into physics, you find that it's not quite the case. A proton and a neutron have a relative mass of slightly more than one. And that's for a very good reason, but you don't do that in chemistry. If you want to know more about that, then have a look at my nuclear binding energy video. Okay, so that's fairly by the by. For chemistry, we can pretty much just say whatever the number is on top, that's the same thing as the number of protons and neutrons. Yes, in reality, it's not quite the same as that, but for chemistry's sake, it works. So fairly easy so far. Lithium has a mass of seven, beryllium has a mass of nine, so there's four protons, five neutrons. However, hold up a second. When we get to chlorine, we see that we have a mass of 35.5. What is that all about? Surely that's impossible. How is it possible for it to have 17 protons and 18 and a half neutrons? Well, of course it can't, can it? So what's actually going on? Well, it's because the number on top, the mass number, actually gives you the average relative atomic mass. You see, there are some chlorine atoms that have a mass number of 35, but yet there are some chlorine atoms that have a mass number of 37. What are these? These are isotopes, aren't they? Same element, that means they're the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. This isotope on the left has 18 neutrons. This isotope on the right has 20 neutrons. Thing is, when you get some chlorine, you won't just have one isotope in there. But it turns out that generally, the isotope on the left is more common, or we might say more abundant. You'll find that you have 75% of these chlorine 35 atoms. They have the 18 protons. The other 25% around about are these chlorine 37 atoms. That is, they have 20 neutrons in. And so therefore, what is the relative atomic mass of this chlorine going to be? We can calculate it by doing 0.75 times 35. So that's just the percentage as a decimal, plus the same for the chlorine 37. And lo and behold, we end up with 35.5. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, so when it comes to finding out yields and how much things weigh in reactions and things, do we have to do 35 or 37? Well, no, we just use 35.5 because when you react chlorine, you're reacting millions and billions and trillions of these atoms. 75% are going to be chlorine 35, 25% are going to be chlorine 37. So when it comes to reactions and yields and things like that, we don't really care about the fact that there are different isotopes in there. All we care about is what the average relative atomic mass is. Now, there are all sorts of isotopes, aren't there? For instance, we can have carbon-12, we can have carbon-13, and we can have carbon-14. But the thing is, is that these bottom two isotopes are very rare. So when it comes to calculating the average relative atomic mass, well, basically, they don't really factor in. 
So really, the relative atomic mass for chlorine is going to be 12 point something, but it's going to be so negligible that we just say it's going to be 12 to 2 sig figs. It can be important though to find out what isotopes we have in a substance. And so how do we actually identify them? I mean, how on earth do we identify that there are some chlorine 37 and chlorine 35s in chlorine? We do that with mass spectrometry. If you want to know more about that, click the card and it'll take you to the video. Leave a like if you found this helpful. If you have any ideas of what you want me to make next, then put it in a comment down below. See you next time.